what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets roared along the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Excellent. Everyone can be seated now. Thank you. All right. Welcome again to the investiture of the Honorable Tony Flores at the 54A District Court. This has been a time of great change in our community and it really hasn't left the court unaffected. Over the course of the last uh, four plus years that I've been at the court, we've seen a complete changeover in the judiciary. Uh, I started just uh, over four years ago, then there was the election of Judge Ward three plus years ago, and the appointment of uh, Judge Simmons, which I believe is coming up on three years, and now the appointment of Judge Flores. We've had a pandemic, we've had Zoom court, we've had a complete change in the way that we uh, conduct business because of some legislative changes. But one of the best changes for our court is the addition of Judge Tony Flores. Already Judge Flores in his short time with the court has added new perspective and diversity to the decisions and leadership at our court. I've been working really hard to have a collaborative leadership in our court. Judge Flores stepped right into that role. I met Judge Flores a little over 18 years ago when I was a brand new attorney and he was a more seasoned prosecutor. I was representing an indigent defendant and Judge Flores conducted himself without ego, without any taking advantage. He was completely fair. He provided information. It is the way that you treat someone who has no power that shows your character. And Judge Flores treated me and my indigent client with respect and dignity. And I expect that that is how Judge Flores will treat the members of our community. And so it is with great pleasure that I welcome a judge like Judge Flores, a great human being, to our court. Thank you. All right. So I believe the next we will hear from Judge McCormick. Thank you, Judge Buchanan. Welcome, and thank you for, all, for you all being here today in support of Judge Flores and the investiture of his judicial appointment. My name is Lisa McCormick, and I am a presiding judge for the 30th Circuit Court in the Family Division. First, I want to recognize all my colleagues that are here today to support um, Judge Flores in, in his investiture. First, Judge Cynthia Ward, Judge Kristen Simmons, Retired Judge Louise Alderson, Magistrate Laura Milmore, 
Magistrate Cindy Faulkner, um, Judge Corey Barkman from the 29th Circuit Court in Clinton County, the Honorable Magistrate Judge Patricia Morris from the Federal Court for the Eastern District of Michigan, Honorable, Honorable Magistrate Judge Anthony P. Patty from the Federal Court of the, uh, for the Eastern District of Michigan, that's a handful, <laughs> and Judge Shlanin, Shannon Th Schlegel from the 29th Circuit Court, and I also see Judge Hillman here today who's in um, the podium um, in the, in the, um, in the, there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored to be here today to celebrate this investiture. It's a privilege to be here today to recognize the accomplishments of my colleague and my friend and to celebrate his investiture with all of you. Judge Flores and I worked together at the Ingham County Prosecutor's Office and those were some great times for me and for the people of Ingham County. What always struck me being a young lawyer was his constant commitment to justice and to the people involved in that process. Then Tony, as we know him, now Judge Flores, always stood up for what was right, to be fair to every litigant, whether represented or not, and to always treat people with dignity and respect. Judge Flores was always sound in his decision making and in his ethics. I always appreciated knowing Judge Flores was many things to many people, most of all, a good man. It is these qualities and so many more that Governor Gretchen Whitmer recognized as paramount when she appointed Judge Flores to the 54A District Court. Judge Flores, it is my distinct honor once again to call you a colleague and a peer. And now it's my distinct pleasure to welcome Judge Cynthia Ward to the podium. Oh, yes. Oh, we're doing the invocation now. Okay. <laughs> yes, please. Did I miss that? Judge Ward, totally. I can follow you. <laughs> also, I just wanted to acknowledge that Judge Kennedy is here from 30th Circuit Court as well. So three people walk into a bar, a judge, a priest, and a lawyer. And as a judge, Judge Flores makes one of his first decisions on who to elect to make the prayer, and he chooses the lawyer. <laughs> now, it's just, he's new at this, so we're going to give him a little bit of time to get his training wheels off. Um, but all jokes aside, it's an absolute honor to be here today to give this invocation. First, let us be thankful to be able to meet here in person and in spirit for this special occasion. As much as he may deny it, Judge Flores is so happy to have so many people here to celebrate him. And as we look around, it is comforting to know that Judge Flores has been surrounded by such a diverse group of people who have perfectly prepared him for this position. And we hope that he continues to welcome our diverse opinions, as that is how he will grow. No matter who is in front of you, Judge Flores, no matter which side of the V they represent, we hope that you raise your head, you make eye contact, and you listen. Because those are the people now that you serve, and that you have served before, and that you live in. May you have the grace and empathy to listen to the unheard voices when those who are scared finally have the courage to speak. Judge Flores, you now have that power to hear their voices, so use it. We hope that you will remain humble during your tenure, and I'm confident that those around you can provide some humble Kool-Aid if you need it, <laughs> when you need it. We hope that Judge Flores has the strength and courage within to make those hard decisions in order to ensure justice. Because as you've told me in the past, sometimes the right decision is when no one is happy. May you have the patience to exercise due diligence to make an informed decision, no matter how big or small the issue is. Because as Albert Einstein once said, in matters of truth and justice, there is no difference between big 
and large and small problems. For issues concerning the treatment of people are all the same, no matter the size. Please continue to have the energy to mentor those around you. There are numerous attorneys and students here today, including myself, can attest that you have made me the attorney I am today. And may we all continue to be a constant and diverse inspiration to you. Finally, we hope that your spirit remains positive and that you embark on this new chapter and you continue to bring that positive energy with everything you do. And in true Judge Flores style, we will end with a quote from the great Jerry Garcia. <laughs> if you're able to enjoy something, to devote your life to it, or a reasonable amount of time and energy, it will work out for you, maybe. So next time, choose the priest. Thank you. <laughs> I regret I was going out of order in the program, but now we'll have our remarks from Judge Ward. Greetings. I have been extended this great honor to share remarks today about my newest benchmate, the Honorable Tony Flores. I wasn't given much direction about what to say, but one thing Judge Flores did make clear was his desire to have this investiture be a celebration of the court and not about him. Judge Flores said, it's about the court and it's about the people of the city of Lansing. I am not surprised that was Judge Flores's request. There was no fanfare surrounding his official oath of office. He was sworn in the day after Easter and began hearing misdemeanor cases two short hours later. He has already won the hearts of many court staff by his laid back presence and humble demeanor. My interactions with him as judge, in my interactions with him as judge, I have been impressed with his early demonstrations of thoughtfulness, not just his thoughtfulness in giving or showing consideration for others, but also his thoughtfulness as demonstrated by his attention to matters as required. When Judge Flores learned of the news of his appointment, his text to me was, quote, this is Tony Flores and a decision has been posted that I get to be your colleague twice, unquote. For those who may not know, I am also a former Cooley Law professor whose time there overlapped with, Tony, with Judge Flores. While I am sure Judge Flores was thrilled at the news of his appointment to the bench, I was admittedly less certain about how he felt about being my colleague twice. <laughs> so as you might expect from a former law professor, I analyzed the meaning and intent behind Judge Flores's use of twice <laughs> in a text message to me. <laughs> so where did I begin? Given that Judge Flores is a former prosecuting attorney, I began with the most obvious of legal concepts, double jeopardy. <laughs> but because my time with Professor Flores was always pleasant, I felt fairly confident that his use of twice was not referencing punishment or carrying any negative implication. So then I began thinking about the positive aspects of twice, such as that double espresso shot to get you through the day, the beauty and awe of a double rainbow, a Major League Baseball double play, and of course, Judge and Mrs. Flores' lovely and accomplished identical daughters, identical twin daughters, Mary Elizabeth and Hope Ann. And with that level of deep analysis and considering all the evidence, it became clear and convincing to me that Judge Flores was happy to be my colleague twice. And I am, beyond any reasonable doubt, happy to twice be his. Of his appointment, Judge Flores has stated that only one job could take him away from the classroom. As his former colleague in law teaching, I am well positioned to understand how meaningful his time in the classroom was for him. 
the best professors can change a student's life as they help students develop their own skills and help students realize opportunities and see what is possible for them. And I think we heard that in Ms. Montgomery's remarks today. This is also true of excellent judges. Judge Flores, I am sure you have already seen from the short time here on the bench that judges can change lives too. Working collaboratively with various justice partners, judges can help people who come before us develop skills and realize potential, different possibilities for them even while they are held, being held accountable for their crimes. Being a judge on this bench has meaning. And I have no doubt, Judge Flores, that you will find serving the people of Lansing as district judge, that it will be as meaningful for you. Chief Judge Buchanan, Judge Simmons and I are here for you. We are united in our support for you and we look forward to seeing your success. Thank you. And now for the part I think you all came to see, we're going to have the administration of the oath by Honorable Magistrate Judge Patricia Morris. already had the judicial demeanor and now he's going to put it to work in the right role and I'm just so proud of you always have been always will be and I'm proud to call you my friend Anthony so okay we'll do the job <laughs> <laughs> please repeat after me I do solemnly swear or affirm I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of Michigan and the Constitution of the state of Michigan and that I will faithfully discharge the duties and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of judge of the 54a district court for the city of Lansing of the office of judge of the 54a D district court city of Lansing according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability congratulations Thank you, sir. Well, and it's all you can see. You can't be a judge without a robe, so <laughs> Judge Simmons. I think it would be nice if your wife would join me for the presentation of the robe. <laughs> like it fits. <laughs> really looks like you've always been wearing it. Okay. <laughs> and now for the Honorable Judge Flores. Thank you. Well, thought long and hard about what to say. What I didn't plan on was putting the real closing act in front of myself, all right? Uh, having Judge Simmons sing the national anthem kind of steals the show. <laughs> and then having Judge Ward give such great remarks 
Nobody really wants to listen to me now, okay? <laughs> Everybody wants to go home on some level, and I get it. I get it. Um, and, then I made, and then I asked Lori Montgomery the best decision I ever made, I ever made to the invocation, which she laughed at, and then she does a wonderful invocation. So part of this is just being lucky, okay? And, and, and knowing your strengths, and knowing that people are your strengths. I guess that's the most important thing here. Um, the, the one thing I'll say about this, as I talk to the judges, and I talk to Chief Judge Buchanan, about, um, about whatever you say on your day of investiture, which is really like, what about me? I mean, that's, that's the discussion you get, like, let's talk about me, and we're not, a, we're not good at that. I'm not good at that. I'm not comfortable with that. Um, it, it, this is about the city of Lansing, this is about our courts, our judges, and this is about the people who come into court and, and they're afraid and they're scared and they need help. And from what I've seen, my six weeks on the bench, we have lawyers and prosecutors and public defenders who are willing to answer that bell every day. Every day they come in and they wanna help people and they wanna do what's right. I'm, maybe I'm naive, but I've seen prosecutors go out of their way to protect rights. I've seen criminal defense lawyers work tirelessly in preserving rights uh, in, in, this, in this atmosphere. And so I didn't realize how hard people work at the court. And, um, and now I'm just, I'm, I'm treasured and valued and humbled to be a part of it. I really am. Uh, it, it, re it really makes me happy, it does. Um, it is crazy. Um, people say what they want when they want to. Um, <laughs> I'm not used to that. Um, I'm getting used to that. Um, sometimes there needs to be timeouts given. Uh, but but it, help, it, it truly helped to be a parent on some level. There, every once in a while, everybody just needs to cool off and then we have to regroup at, at times. Um, I am so uh, thankful for everybody who showed up today because I know time is a luxury. And I see friends, old friends, um, people I've known over 20 years. I've known Trishy more since the first day of law school. She was my wife's roommate in law school. You know? uh, to say that she's a part of my family is not even close. Uh, they took me in and they treated me as family. Her mother, another judge, took me in and treated me like family. Um, I'll never forget that. Those are things that stay with you. Um, I got visited by people only because they knew my wife. My wife's pretty neat, okay? <laughs> and they knew, and so they would come and they would say things like, I was at your, I was at, we, we lost Mary Jane recently and she said, um, I was at your mom's funeral. I remember that. That's something that's heartfelt. And the only reason they were coming to see me is because they knew my wife on some level. And that's heartfelt. I wanted to sit and talk a little bit about family because it is part of, friends and family are why I'm here, all right? Um, if I didn't have friends and family to talk to, I, it'd be a problem. Um, I'm not an organized person, and uh, I think Wendy, can, Wendy and Nathaniel can, uh, that I need all the help I can get, okay? I need a tremendous amount of help. Um, but my, my family, uh, who, is not, who is not able to be here, my parents simply can't travel. They're not, in a, in, they're not in a place in life that they can travel. But I, I want you to know their humble beginnings. They, 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 they're from West Texas. They're from a, a high school. Uh, there were six in my mom's graduating class. There were six people in my mom's graduating class. They, um, they, both my grandparents worked for a railroad. They, they were brakemen for the railroad. I mean, it, it, those are humble beginnings and they embraced education is what they did. They both have masters, they both have degrees. I watched my mom graduate from college. It was, it's one of the greatest things that I, that, I could, that I could achieve as a spectator to watch your parent graduate. And so I understand that, that they had different struggles than I would ever have. We weren't allowed to speak English in my household. See, speaking English with an accent is how you get in trouble in West Texas. You actually ride in a different bus, you're given different food, and you're treated differently in West Texas. So me and my sister did not speak, Eng uh, speak English with an accent. We, they were taught to assimilate, and that's tragic. You should never be ashamed of your accent. You should never be ashamed of who you are and where you came from. And that's a great tragedy. 
But they took that and they embraced it. And my dad, my dad came out of government service after 32 years at a GS-15 and then opened a business. My mom taught school for 25 years as a kindergarten teacher. I mean, th that's accomplishments. And so I, that's some of what I consider important. I consider those accomplishments important. I also uh, consider accomplishments like having family here, okay? I have, I have Dale Foster and Laura Foster and Jim McNutt, Mary Jane McNutt passed. I have a second family in Michigan. I have a family that really, in, that really took me in and, and provided me with all kinds of support, meaningful support that meant something. I have a wife who I met in law school. She, people don't know this. She's much smarter than I am, okay? <laughs> she, she's just much smarter than I am, you know? And, 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 and maybe she's smart enough to know that. I mean, you know, maybe that's why she married me. I don't know. But it was the best decision I ever made. I've made a lot of good decisions. But marrying Karen Flores, Karen McNutt, was the best decision I ever made. It simply, it simply took my career and gave me a person who I could become friends with for the rest of my life. You know, when we had twins, you know what she told me? She told me to finish my criminal docket. I was a trial lawyer in front of Judge Brown. She said, finish your docket. You're not good to me here, okay? <laughs> you're not, you, 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 I need help, but you're not gonna help. So you're, you're, your mind is in your docket. Go finish your docket. And that was true. I, you know, there, I, I was all wrapped up in, in trial work. That's, that's the truth of it. And only somebody who, who's gone through it and understands that can tell you those things. Only somebody you respect and who cares for you can tell you you're being an idiot. That's who you listen to. Listen to that person, okay? That person cares enough you about, about enough you to tell you what you don't want to hear. It's easy to tell you what you want to hear. I do want to say I have two wonderful daughters, Hope Ann and, uh, Hope Ann and Mary Elizabeth. Um, there's no way I could get them here after they came for their mom's birthday last week. I was, they both live in California. They both graduated from MSU. They're both graphic designers. I know I'm saying both a lot, but they're identical twins. I, I, you know, and, they, and they turn into your world on some level. Your kids just turn into your world on some level. Um, I, I, I see the Butler family here. Um, Rebecca, Sydney, Brittany. Uh, you really should be up here, okay? But it's okay that you're there. Um, they are part of my family, the Butler family. Uh, I, this is not supposed to be full of angst because we've, we've, we're processing it. I lost the, my best friend in January. Uh, he made me a better person. I was taken in by the Butler family as a colleague and a friend and then a relative. Uh, six brothers and sisters Jeff Butler had. Uh, Irish Catholic to the core. Uh, I can't tell you what, what he meant to me and what he meant to Karen, my wife, who also knew him well. Uh, he was a wonderful person. Um, and, and he taught me what courage is. I saw two years struggle with cancer and it was courageous. It absolutely was. So I'm blessed to have you here, Rebecca, Brittany, and Sydney. I truly am. And, I, and, and know this, your father made me a better person. He, that's all I can say. He really did. the world of academia, the world of prosecution. I see good friends from when I was a prosecutor here. Uh, they taught me the adversarial setting. I had mentors. I'm not smart enough to do this myself. Sam Smith, Mike Ferency, Linda Maloney, or Linda Ferency, depending on your time period, okay? <laughs> they taught me. They were all criminal defense lawyers before they were prosecutors. I mean, if, 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 Judge Buchanan said it right. If you can't beat them, join them, okay? <laughs> I mean, they were really quality. Judge Houck knew what he was doing when he hired them as a prosecutor. He was putting together a, a trial team that was going to be invincible. And I think on some level he did that. And I'm, I thank, I'm thankful for the mentorship. Uh, that, that sets your career. I don't forget that. The mentorship is such a huge thing. Then I go into the world of academia. I see Frank Aiello here. I see my, my assistant, uh, Cindy Hurst. Uh, I, see, I see Julie Mullins here. I see other professors here, Professor Langham, um, Professor Moore. I see you here. Those 16 years in academia really taught me to reflect on everything you do, everything you do. 
I've had the adversarial sit uh, uh, setting. I've seen it, and now as I get to reflect on it, it really confirmed what I already knew, that it's hard work to be vigilant in our criminal justice system. It is hard work to be vigilant. And, it, and, it's, and it's, it's a responsibility we all have. I come to this court, and I've heard of judges, and we've all heard of the, the, the dreaded black robe disease, you know? You've all, yeah, I said it, okay? <laughs> We've all heard of that. And then I meet my bench. I meet Judge Stacia Buchanan, who I've known for years. I meet Judge Ward, who I was a colleague with, and then I, I got to know on the bench. And then I meet Judge Simmons, who you cannot find a more practical and more fair-minded judge, okay, on some level. They, they took me in. Uh, they, they helped me when I needed help. Uh, they were encouraging. And better than that, as judges, uh, what we have on our bench are people who like to spend time together. They're collegial. They want to be with each other. I'm in somebody's office because I want to be in somebody's office, because I want to hear how their weekend went. I want to know how their day went. It's important to me. And that's what I've received in, the, in this courtroom in this 54A district court. Everybody's been wonderful. Um, I have one rule, that is don't be boring, so I'm gonna wrap this up, okay? Because you can't, you can't forgive boring, all right? Um, I'd like to thank all of you for being here. This is, um, this is an angst-ridden day full of anxiety, and it's also a, a wonderful day that hopefully is going to end soon. Um, <laughs> I will tell you this, um, I'm, I, I'm very humbled by this, by this process. Uh, I think those who come in front of me know that. I think those lawyers who come in front of me understand that. And my, my role here is to help you have your best day on your worst day. To help you have your best day on your worst day. That's the role of the court. That, that's how we serve. And that's how we do serve those in front of us. Um, so thank you. Thank you for coming today. Well, you can see this is starting to wrap up. Just a couple last things in the program. We'll get some closing remarks from Magistrate Laura Milmore. Thank you. It is an absolute pleasure to be here and to be thought of uh, by Judge Flores to give these closing remarks. He told me straight up front, um, be brief and tell everybody where they need to go after we uh, finish this, but I also wanted to say something because he and I were neighbors, backyard neighbors for a number of years and we both had two kids, have two kids, mine are now grown and his are older than my kids, but I can tell you that when I would look out my back window or I'd be in the backyard with my kids and I would see him outside playing with his children, and they were very young at the time, that to me adds to his character that he spent time with his children and that says volumes about this man. I can't say anything about being a lifetime friend or a colleague, or a, but I can say I saw he's a good dad, he's a good man, he's gonna do great with this court, so I'm very grateful to have you here. All right, so let's get to the good part. Um, we are, you are all invited to the reception downstairs in the lobby on the first floor, but before going there, if you wanna stop on the sixth floor, we have a gallery of photos of the judges who have been in this court since the beginning, so if you're interested at all, we did get his photo up, so you can always take a picture of that as well. Just pretend that he's with you. Do a selfie. <laughs> all right. And uh, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. And then, all right. And now for the closing of the court. Okay. Welcome.
congratulations, Judge uh, Flores, again. Uh, thank you all for being here. I think uh, today we heard a lot of things about Judge Flores being lucky. Uh, I don't think he's lucky. He actually works very hard to get to where he got today. I've known Judge Flores now for 11 years. I was one of his uh, law school uh, students. And uh, he, uh, I spent about 25% 20, of my time in law school taking classes with him on, on, different, on different levels, whether it's evidence or, or trial, uh, uh, mock trial and some other trial uh, uh, skills uh, classes. But one thing that he did, and he, I think, mentioned a lot today, embrace your accent. As you can see, I have an accent. I wasn't born here. Uh, but what I mean by embrace uh, your accent, he always had a very inclusive uh, environment. He always wanted everybody to not feel foreign, to feel that, you know what, this is part of the body. Whether it's a body, it's a student body, it's a, it's a law school body, whatever he did. And uh, one of the things that he, uh, he also did, he actually believed in me enough to invite me to uh, go on the national trial team, and this was a challenge for him, and I am forever grateful for him, but that's the person who he is. He actually uh, tries his best to change the life of his students and the life of everybody that uh, gets around him, and those touches that he end up leaving, they have some life uh, effects, life effects that will never change. So thank you for being here, Congra congratulations again, Judge, and I obviously invite everybody to join us also at the uh, reception downstairs. Thank you. That's it, folks. We're probably going to take a few photographs, but we'll be right behind you.